Hello, my name is Radek Kazmarek. I am the chair of the Coagulation Product Safety Supply and Access, or CPSSA, committee of the World Federation of Hemophilia. And in this video, I am going to summarize the article entitled Vaccination Against COVID-19, Rationale, Modalities and Precautions for Patients with Hemophilia and Other Inherited Bleeding Disorders. This paper introduces several recommendations which have been formulated by members of the CPSSA committee on behalf of the World Federation of Hemophilia, the European Hemophilia Consortium, the National Hemophilia Foundation, and the European Association for Hemophilia and Allied Disorders in response to the rollout of the vaccines against COVID-19. Safety and effectiveness of the recently approved vaccines were robustly demonstrated in tens of thousands of people in clinical trials. And so vaccination is the only effective and safe way to limit the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID-19. However, the success of vaccination campaigns will depend on how many people receive a vaccine. People with bleeding disorders and their healthcare providers may struggle with specific questions about vaccination, and this article is meant to help them make informed and fact-based decisions. The recommendations proposed here have been discussed at length, peer-reviewed, and they were being updated until the very end of the publication process, and so, the, so they provide the best information currently available on vaccination against COVID-19 and its implications for people with bleeding disorders. Let's take a look at them. People with bleeding disorders are not at greater risk of contracting COVID-19 or developing its severe form, and so they are not considered a priority group for vaccination. However, when they do develop the disease and require hospital admission, their management may be very complex, which should be a strong argument in favor of vaccinating. Three different vaccines have been approved so far. There is currently no reason to select a particular type of vaccine for bleeding disorders patients. One of the three vaccines uses an adenovirus. Now it is important to understand that adenovirus is not related to adeno-associated viruses or AEV, and adenovirus is not being used in hemophilia gene therapy. Conversely, no vaccines against COVID-19 use AEV viruses. But if AAV-based vaccines are available in the future, people with bleeding disorders who are considering AAV gene therapy should avoid them because this type of virus is widely used as a vector for gene therapy and prior immunization against AAV with an AAV-based vaccine would make them ineligible for gene therapy. The vaccines should be administered intramuscularly. There is no data on other routes of administration such as the subcutaneous route, and effectiveness of vaccines against COVID-19 has been demonstrated only for intramuscular delivery, so there should be no deviations from that route. Patients with severe or moderate hemophilia or type 3 from Villebrun disease should receive factor concentrate on the day of vaccination and before the intramuscular injection to prevent bleeding in the muscle. There is no evidence that vaccination increases the risk of inhibitor formation. So clotting factor administration should not be staggered or delayed. Patients on emicizumab, all those with factor eight levels higher than 10% do not need extra hemostatic protection prior to vaccination. Any adverse events such as hematoma or allergic reaction should be reported to a hemophilia treatment center. Individuals experiencing an allergic reaction should contact their physician immediately or go to the nearest hospital emergency room right away as it can be life-threatening. Patients with a history of allergic reactions to extended half-life products containing polyethylene glycol or PEG should discuss vaccine choice with their physician because some vaccines contain PEG as an excipient. Individuals who have had a history of allergic reactions to factor concentrates, plasma, or cryoprecipitate, but have not had reactions to previous vaccines, are at no greater risk than the overall population 
for a reaction to a COVID-19 vaccine. There are no specific contraindications to vaccination related to complications of bleeding disorders or their therapies. Patients on immune tolerance therapy and those treated for hepatitis C or HIV or other conditions can be vaccinated. Patients on immunosuppressive agents can be vaccinated too, but their immune responses and protection from infection may be reduced. Patients taking part in a clinical study should discuss and report vaccination to the study investigators. And finally, it is important that hemophilia treatment centers, in close collaboration with patient organizations, take action to inform patients about the vaccines and contribute to an effective vaccination program. You will find more details on each of these recommendations in the article. I encourage you to read it and hope it will help in decision-making and perhaps advocating for access to the vaccines should it be unduly restricted. Thank you for your attention.